it's tricky enough to get out of bed to go to work and it becomes ten times as difficult when it's cold outside. But sleep experts now say there's an easy solution, the ten-second rule. Apparently, I don't believe it, but apparently <laughs> if you force yourself to leap out of bed and wrap yourself immediately in a warm dressing gown, you'll be less tempted to hide back under the covers. We're joined now by sleep expert Dr Lindsay Browning, who has more tips to improve our sleep. So, Lindsay, is this true? If we, if we bounce out of bed after within 10 seconds of waking up, like a dog does when it wakes up, um, are, we, are we actually... Is that, is Lindsay, that, is that can, the, I, can I tell you first Is that first the best off, thing to do? I bounce out of bed because I feel I need to. I'm afraid... Phillips a snoozer with that snooze button going, not once, not twice, but many times. Yeah, so one of the first things that I tell people is that the snooze button really is your enemy. It's really tempting to keep pressing it because falling asleep, the action of falling asleep is actually very pleasant. That's why we keep pressing snooze. So it's not helpful because the extra sleep you're getting isn't any good. It's not good quality sleep. So absolutely the best thing to do in the morning is to set your alarm for as late as you possibly need to get up and then get up at that point. Don't set it for seven if you only have to get up at half seven and keep pressing snooze. Set it for half seven and get out of bed straight away, straight into something warm because otherwise if you get out and you're freezing, it'll just be so unpleasant. You'll hate the day already. I want no, to no, say, I this is music to no, my no, no. ears, I've, I've got what to, Lindsay is saying, I, I'm that's defend, what I do. This I, is what I do. I'm going to defend myself here, Lindsay, because <laughs> what, what, the way I look at it, and let me, let me know if you've got any sympathy for this, I'm, I don't sleep for many hours in oh, a night. That's true. But I, when I do sleep, I'm, like, out for the count. I, my sleep is very, very deep, but not for particularly long. Can I just Whereas say, sometimes I think Philip's passed away in the night, I cannot that's, wake that's him wish, up. That's, that's wishful thinking, that is, more <laughs> than anything else. But Whereas Esther sleeps quite lightly, but yeah. for long, longer. So... If, you, if you're a deep sleeper like me, I find it very difficult to just wake up and get... I've, 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 I'm not even sure I've, I could... Do it. It's possible to do that. Is, is it, does it not depend on how deeply you sleep? There are things you can do. So um, we have these things called sleep cycles. So about every hour and a half-ish, we'll go from light sleep into a deeper sleep and then back into uh, light dreaming sleep again. And this will repeat across the night. So if you're waking up from... If your alarm goes off when you're in very deep sleep, you'll feel so much sleep inertia, so groggy, so sleepy, it'll be really hard to wake up. So it may be that you're simply not getting enough sleep that you need, or you could maybe get something like an alarm clock that wakes you up a little bit <clears throat> gradually. So with some lights, so you can get these light alarm clocks that start producing a little bit of light and then more light and a lot of light. So by the time your alarm goes off, it's already kind of pulled you into a lighter part of sleep, making you feel more alert and awake the second you wake up. Now, so that might be helpful for you. Lindsay, do you know what I used to have? I don't even know if you can buy them anymore. Do you remember those teas made by the side of the bed? Oh, and it would oh, right. boil the water. Oh, well, what I'm saying showing is... your age now, <laughs> aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm oh, saying dear, is oh, maybe dear. that's what... But because there was that gentle noise... You know, bubble, bubble, bubble. Oh, geez, bubble. And then Believe. as you woke up, you had your warm drink. So maybe this is something that Philip needs to get next to his bed. His onesie on the outside of his bed that he can jump into and his tea's made as well. What a what a thought. What yeah, a sometimes, sometimes those really harsh alarm clock sounds can be unhelpful because they're so... If you break, wake you up with a meow, meow kind of sound, you're so shocked that your immediate reaction is just to turn it off and go back to sleep again. Whereas if your alarm is a little bit softer, a bit more gentle, then by the time it's, you're really aware of it, you're already a little bit more awake and you're not so angry with it to turn it off. So again, those really harsh alarm clocks can be unhelpful. And keep your alarm clock a little bit further away from you if you're struggling to wake up so that you have to physically get out of bed uh, to go I'm and the alarm off. clock for Philip. Yeah, this is true. the person who it, is the alarm clock for Philip. It is true. I mean, it, should we be? Should everyone be having eight hours sleep a day? I mean, there was always a, this urban myth that, you know, every hour you had before midnight to sleep counted double and all these things. Are these sort of just urban myths or is there some truth behind all of these things? So that's great. <clears throat> Those are two really common myths. So that every hour before midnight counts double after is actually not true at all. It's just the fact that if you go to bed early, you're much more likely to get more sleep because realistically, your awake time, you're probably is going to be set. You have to wake up for the kids or for your work. So therefore, if you go to bed before midnight, you're just simply going to get more sleep so you'll feel better. 
Whereas the eight hours isn't so helpful because actually science suggests that adults should get somewhere between seven and nine hours sleep a night. And that doesn't mean just because eight's in the middle that eight is the perfect number. We all have our individual sleep needs. You might be somebody who needs near a seven hour sleep a night, or you might be someone who needs near a nine. And if you're trying to get eight, just because that's the magic number you read, you'll probably not be happy, especially if you need nine hours sleep a night, which sadly I do. If you only get eight hours sleep a night, you'll be sleep deprived by an hour every night. And lots of times we have a bed partner like, like you do. And mostly people don't have the same sleep needs. And yet we go to bed at the same time, set the alarm for the same time. And then we're surprised that one of us is so tired in the morning because we're trying to get the same amount of sleep when actually we might need different amounts. Dr. Lindsay Browning, thank you so much indeed for joining us this morning with those tips. Thank uh you.